Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. A couple of weeks ago, I did my first fine art tutorial on how to create watercolor lettering using a water brush. And this week I wanted to share some basics with brush script lettering if you fill that water chamber of your water brush with ink. So I'm taking just a regular water brush and where there's the water chamber for it, instead of water, I filled it with ink. And I actually filled it with this kind of ink, the Speedball Super Black but being super black, it was also super messy coming out of this container when I tried to fill it in here. So I would highly suggest not doing that unless you want everything to become black in your sink. So um, I will make a recommendation for a different type of container for this ink if you'd like to create this typography using the same tools I'm using. And I'll leave links to everything I'm using in the video description, so be sure to check that out. And for this tutorial, I just wanna go over some basics if you choose to create your own brush brush script lettering. Um, there's a few tips and tricks along the way that'll make your life a lot easier when you decide to do this style of lettering using a brush. So I just want to walk through a few of those, but first I want to share some examples of some of my past work with just using the water brush with the ink. So I just want to share that right now. And I'm using, for all these examples, I use the exact same size brush. This is the medium water brush. And you can see you can go pretty light and get some really nice results. You can mix in some sans serif typography with some script lettering. You can try different styles, introducing some illustration with your lettering. Um, just your typical heavy and lightweight. A little more illustration or flourishes mixed in. There's another style, more italicized, and then uh, another kind of italicized but lighter weight lettering. Okay, so we're just going to jump right in, and the first thing that we need to go over is kind of your guidelines when you are beginning your own lettering. And this lettering can be used, it's really nice if you want to make custom, you know, birthday cards or greeting cards. Uh, you can end up creating a font out of it. You can use this typography and scan it in. You can vectorize it in Illustrator. You could mask some textures into it, similar to what I did in the watercolor typography tutorial. Instead of using a font, just use your lettering. Um, so there's a lot of uses for this. So when you begin uh, creating your own custom lettering, you need to follow some basic rules just to keep consistency with your letters. So. I always start by, um, you know, practicing a little bit with your guides. So this is your cap height, this is your X height, this is your baseline, and this is your descender line. So a lot of your letters live between your baseline and your X height, and the X height is really just the height of the letter X, the lowercase letter X, within your font or your, your lettering style. And your cap height is where your caps fall or any lowercase letters like a B that have um, an A sender on it. And then your D sender line like a G, that's where the bottom part of your G would hit is this D sender line. So I'll quickly show some examples. So with your, um, your water brush, you just want to give it a, a slight squeeze just to get the ink moving. You don't need to squeeze it too much. The flow is pretty consistent with this once you have it filled with ink. Okay, so since I'm using a lowercase a, I want to make sure it comes up to my X height and comes down to my baseline. Go up to my cap height for a lowercase l. Here's my P. H. And I'm putting more pressure on my downstrokes than I am on my upstrokes. Just to give it a little more personality. So I messed this one up a little bit where you see the E. I should have done a different style of B. But this is why you have your guidelines. You know, it's really good practice for your letters. Okay. So once you get comfortable with laying out your type, and you can see they kind of look like a family now because we're all hitting the X height and the baseline, the cap height, and actually I could have brought this H all the way down to the baseline too, or the descender line. So you just want to start getting consistent with your letter forms before you kind of freehand it without using guides at all. So if I come in here and I want to draw more of a, an italicized type of letter form, 
Uh, all I need to do is draw my guidelines once again. So I've got my cap height, my X height, my baseline, and my descender line. And the most important thing to remember when you are drawing italicized letter form is that you want to uh, maintain a very consistent angle for each of those letters. So in order to kind of rough that out, we want to draw some guides that are similar in angles. So I'm just going to come in here and freehand some angles that I'm going to attempt to make as consistent as possible by freehanding. And the how extreme your angles become uh, can influence your letter forms drastically. So I would start out by just doing a subtle angle and then moving to a more extreme angle as you go. So these ones are going to be much more subtle. Okay. So as you can see, I've got my guidelines now for my angles and I'm just going to come in here with my water brush and I'm going to draw all of my letter forms consistent with these guides that I just drew. Okay, so you can see right away that I've got consistent angles with all of my letter forms and that they still look like a family, but I've got this really nice italicized effect going on. So that's just another tip for experimenting with different styles for your lettering. Where your X height is um, in proximity to your cap height and your baseline has a lot to do with um, the personality that your typeface or your letter forms will take on. So I'll show you an example. So with this one, I have my cap height. If I have uh, an X height that's pretty close to my cap height and quite a ways away from my baseline, you end up having um, typography that takes on a totally different look. So this is a really quick way to experiment with different styles or personalities of your lettering. So if I have my word once again you can see it looks a little different than if I draw out my guides and I have this time I have my X height much closer to my baseline and there's my descender now we can see how different they're gonna look So you can see right away, the only thing that I changed was the proximity of my X height to my cap height and my baseline. And you can see it automatically, I get totally different results after doing that. So you just want to make sure whenever you're drawing a word that you stay consistent with your X height, your baseline, your cap height, and your descender line. And once you go freehand, it's totally fine to have a variable baseline, but you kind of want it to average out to be about the same. So I'll show you an example of that really quick.
Okay, so for this example, you can tell that my baseline varies quite a bit. So you could say it's for the U, it's definitely right here. For the S, it's right here, and actually the H2. The R, um, it kind of dips a little bit, so that one's a little more difficult to tell. Um, right now, I've got my descender right here, and my cap height, I've got one right here and one right here. So you just want to make sure that across your word um, that you're baseline you know it's kind of average right here it falls in it's very close you just don't want too much distance like I think this might be a little too much distance for me but it does add a lot of personality when you vary it you just want to make sure that you're consistent as possible that way you're throughout your word it doesn't look like you change typefaces you want some nice consistency with your letter forms so this would also be an x height this would be an x height and this would be an X height. So we're all, we're kind of similar in here. We're somewhere around here. So as long as you keep an average, you can get a little fancier with varying your baseline and your X height. Um, so I'll just do one more example of drawing that out. And just remember downstrokes are lots of pressure, upstrokes are very light pressure. Okay, so this one I kept it a little bit lighter, so I wasn't as heavy with my downstroke. So you can get pretty heavy with just your medium um, water brush versus, you know, you can go a little bit lighter, but you can still keep it varied. And definitely don't, don't feel bad about going back in if you want to correct some areas or add a little more weight to other areas. It's totally fine, especially if you decide to scan it in and vectorize it. You're never going to see any place where you kind of got a little darker around the edges because you're correcting things. So don't feel bad about going back in. So right here I've got some um, varied baselines, some very varied X heights, but overall it still feels like it's still the type, same typeface, which is really important. So as far as getting started with a uh, water brush with some brush script letterings, just keep in mind, you know, your guidelines where you've got your cap height, your X height, your baseline, and your descender line. Definitely feel free to draw those in and practice with those a bunch before you go freehand because you want your freehand to be as consistent as possible. So my biggest advice would just be to really practice before you move on to a blank white sheet of paper and then you'll be much happier with your results. Uh, one last thing that I wanted to mention is the type of paper that I'm using. This is just plain old cardstock, but look, it doesn't even bleed through, which is really nice. And I would, I would recommend this over just regular paper by far, because regular paper you might get some bleed through, and it'll, it'll actually even bleed into the fibers of the paper, so you, the edges of your type won't be quite as clean as with the cardstock. So the cardstock that I'm using... I paid like $5 for this pack at a department store, had 150 sheets, it's 110 pound, 92 bright, and the, the brand is Georgia Pacific. And I'll once again leave links to everything that I used in this video, so if you want to practice with your own using the same tools I am, definitely um, check those out. And so that's some basics with brush script lettering. I'd love to see what you do if you decide to do this, so definitely. Um, Use the hashtag ETBrushScript on Instagram, and I'd love to see it. And thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com, for more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.